Hello and welcome to the second episode of the leadership series where today we are going to deal with the second most damaging uh, leadership trait that all the leaders need to take care of. Uh, in the first episode we spoke about uh, the leadership arrogance and how arrogance could be extremely destructive to the organization. Today we'll, uh, and we call the arrogance the, the, the mother of all sins, uh, today we will talk about the second most damaging uh, um, uh, trait or issue in the organization and leadership, which is the organizational hypocrisy or leadership hypocrisy. Um, many people, when they look at hypocrisy, they will confuse hypocrisy with the emotional intelligence. And many people, when they, when you talk to uh, people who are famous of uh, being uh, uh, having you know hypocritic in acts, they will talk. Uh, this is emotional intelligence. I'm. I'm sweetening uh, the words, I'm sweetening uh, the facts. Um, is it emotional intelligence or is it hypocrisy? Let's look at, again, five signs that this is hypocrisy and how, if hypocrisy is in the organization, how do we treat hypocrisy? So the first sign is the conditional standards. What does it mean, conditional standards? Is every organization has policies and procedures and have rules that should apply to all. In terms of um, uh, applying penalties against doing a wrong act or rewarding a good uh, uh, positive behavior, conditional standards mean that this, those are the rules, but for certain people, the rules will be bent, the rules will be overridden. So for example, if you do a certain mistake, if you are part of the good clan, then you will not be asked, you will not be penalized for that. If you are from the normal tribe, then you will be penalized. Of course, there is also the unwanted tribe, you will be severely penalized. So uh, there is a, a very big stretch between applying the rule. You can go to all the way to the extreme, if this is from the unwanted clan, or just apply the rule if it's a normal person, or actually don't apply the rule. So completely um, uh, ignore the rule if he is from the favored part. So the favored, normal, unfavored people. If you have conditional standards, you are a hypocrite. You are applying hypocrisy. You are improving and you are enhancing the organizational hypocrisy. This is not emotional uh, uh, intelligence. This is not being nice to people. If there is a performer who did a mistake, you can penalize him. However, you can announce to the organization that because of his performance, because of one, two, three, so the reasons of doing that needs to be clarified that I'm going to um, make the minimal amount of penalty, but they should be penalized. So the, 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 there shouldn't be people who are extremely penalized, just penalized, not penalized. There, this needs to be completely clear, clear to the organization and clear to the leaders. Um, conditional standards. The second sign of hypocrisy in the organization is actually lying with crossing your fingers, saying this is a white lie, this is a good lie, this is a, something that um, is in the benefit of the organization. There is a very big difference between lying and between telling people, I know the truth, but I don't have to say it. I don't want to say it. Trust is not built on saying everything. And many organizations uh, are talking about the value of transparency. So they will talk about transparency and how transparency and trust is important in the culture. However, the way they apply it is that the truth is told, again, to parties. So you have the unfavored, you have the normal people, you have the favored. The favored will be told the full truth. The normal people will not be told anything, and the unfavored might be even misled or sometimes um, um, uh, promised or told completely wrong things in order to um, deceive or um, th I don't want them to know the truth. Um, so again, saying to being clear and transparent means that you say the truth. It doesn't mean you say everything, but it means that if you know the truth, tell people I know some facts that I'm not going to say and don't have parties, again, don't have people who are within the circle, you'll tell them everything, outside the circle, you'll not tell them anything. This is, again, not emotional intelligence, this is organizational hypocrisy. It is, in a nutshell, creating favoritism and favorite groups, unfavorite groups, and the normal clan, the normal tribe, and this is absolutely wrong. 
So sign number three is not walking the talk and not having integrity. I've seen organizations telling people, um, I'm out of money. Uh, I don't have enough budgets to spend in, on learning and development and on training and, and, and. But in the same time, they are spending on extravaganza flights to somewhere. They are spending on uh, renewing their vehicles, their company cars, and renewing personal um, cars and personal vacations. So how do you, you not have the budget to develop your people, but in the same time, you have budget to do things that are unnecessary to the productivity of the organization? Again, walking the talk, integrity, being true to what you say is absolutely important for the health of the organization. Integrity is called the permission to play in any market. Means that this is the card that you get to play in the market. If you don't have integrity, you don't have anything. You don't have an organization. Hippocratical organizations, hypocrites, and in an organization you will notice hypocrisy when you see leaders doing things and saying completely the opposite things. So people would say, I will cut budgets, but they are spending. Um, I've seen organizations where they promise, they say, no person is going to be recruited in this role without an assessment, without proper, because we care about the people and we want to ensure that we uncover all the talents in the organization. However, all the senior positions are being recruited without an assessment, saying that this is a selection process and we know the good talent speed. So why did you say it? Why do you say something and you do something else? Why do you tell your people, I, um, I, I'm not going to do, um, I'm not going to spend budget, but you're spending budget. I'm not going to recruit people without an assessment, but you are, we are recruiting. Walking the talk, integrity is one of the very, very, very big signs, uh, false promises and all of that is big signs of hypocrisy. Sign number four is when you have the, um, the targeted victims. So, the, the, you know, you would notice in hypocrisy in organizations from being people who are easily victimized. You know where to shoot. You know the where to throw the blame. Um, because of favoritism, so because the, there are favorite groups, I really want to protect those favorite groups. And if anything goes wrong, I know whom to blame. Those group, the unwanted group. Because it's easy for you to frame, it's easy for you to blame, it's easy for you uh, to um, um, uh, point fingers at certain people. Um, in many cases, I've seen even uh, when hypocrisy is really deep in the organization, leaders, and this relates to the second sign. You remember the second sign we said not saying the truth and lying. Sometimes some leaders would set up the uh, unfavored group with un, um, um, uh, accurate information, inaccurate information or uh, untrue information so that they do a certain act based on that. So they mislead them in order to victimize them in order to keep them as a victim when something happens wrong. So they will allow them, for example, to spend a certain budget somehow, or they will allow them to make a decision somehow, ignore that for a moment so that they know they are going to make a mistake by overspending, by spending in the wrong place, by making a wrong decision. And then they say, all right, great. So when something goes wrong, they are the victims. Easy for me to kick them out. Having, again, it relates to having favorite groups and unfavorite groups, favorite, unfavorite groups. And this is one of the um, fourth, the fourth sign of uh, hypocrisy. Then the last sign of hypocrisy is usually hypocrites don't like to be criticized and they don't like criticism. They will always tell you, give me feedback. Once you give them feedback, they remove the mask. They will take off the mask like this, and then they will show you the other side of the coin and the other side of the face and the aggressive and the very aggressive feedback. Why? Because this part, that's why this um, organizational hypocrisy is the second most damaging because it relates to arrogance in a certain way. Because those leaders like to be pleased, like to be, um, um, uh, that's why they are hypocrites, because they, they, they would improve and enhance and uh, um, uh, encourage hypocrisy in the organization. They like to be shining, they like people to clap for them, they like people to flatter them. And of course, that side, when people go from the other side of uh, the story saying, I don't like what you have done, I think you should have done it better, they immediately show them the other face and they become in the unfavorites. So Hippocratic leaders and uh, um, hypocrisy is usually when leaders go to the organization, everybody is in the middle, yeah? They become the clan, they are the clan. 
And the people who start saying good words, lying, uh, um, using flatter to the leader, they become in the favorite group. The people who start saying the truth, even if it's painful, they go in the unfavorite group. And then the unfavorite group becomes the victims. They become the ones not saying the truth to them, not in, uh, disclosing information to them. And then you start having three groups in the organization, the, the, the normal majority, like a bell curve, you know, like the bell curve exactly. You have the normal majority. You have the unfavorite group. You want to kick them away. You have the favorite group. You want to keep them and actually grow them in different positions. Now, when we look at organizational hypocrisy and we see um, it's based on favoritism, it's based on conditional standards like we mentioned, and usually the leaders don't recognize the difference, the very big difference between being emotional intelligent and being um, uh, truthful. The emotional intelligence is saying the truth in a nice way, but not unsaying the truth or saying lies, which is completely opposite. You can know the truth, but zip it, but you can actually flip the truth and say something, a big lie in order to please the boss. So if you're a leader and you're listening to that, please encourage people to be correctly emotionally intelligent, which means encourage truth, encourage the facts in the organization. However, teach people how to give feedback in the right way, but truthful. For example, you can say, instead of saying you're doing great boss and you know that he's not doing great, you might say an emotional intelligence statement, something similar to, boss, did you consider doing other things like one, two, three, which you are telling him indirectly, there are other options. Boss, have you seen the possible risks that we are going into? What about doing that? What do you think if we try to do this? What are the pros and cons of moving, of doing this and not doing this? The, those are emotional intelligence statements, but you know, saying, boss, you're the best, boss, you're doing great in order to please the boss, keep your job. If you're an employee playing hypocrisy because you know it, it gets you somewhere, and I, I know that in many organizations, hypocrisy leads people somewhere, places, big chairs, places, of course, yeah. But what happens to the organization? It is built on lack of integrity and lack of trust. Eventually, smart people, talents, are going to jump the ship because they know they cannot survive. Or if they try to play the game and they get acculturated by the hypocritical uh, organization, you will lose their confidence and you will lose the truth. The truth and the true information behind uh, them and the good ideas that they have because they will only work to please the boss. If you're a boss listening to me, please review the five symptoms and the five signs and there is always a way to develop hypocrisy. It's not like arrogance, but please don't switch. Hypocrisy can turn into arrogance. So try as much as possible to um, limit and manage hypocrisy in the organization, encourage people to say the truth, tell them, and as a leader, be courageous to take the feedback and tell them, I want you to tell me the truth, even if it's painful, be a courageous leader. If you're an employee playing hypocrisy because it leads you somewhere, please watch out because this is going to destroy you and the organization eventually. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next episode where we are going to talk about the third destructive leadership trait and how to correct it in the organization. Thank you very much.